Good day to everyone. This is the Meek Street Church of Christ. I'm Brian Mead, and I'm here to study God's Word with you today. And we started a new type of, of lessons today. We're going to talk about some words of the Bible, great words of the Bible, and look and see what those particularly are. So we want to study God's Word, and there's times when these words will come up, and we'll have to deal with the definitions and try to figure out what they are. And a lot of times they're very simple concepts, and that's really what the lesson is today, is really about a simple word that we see all the time in the scriptures. And I don't think we have any hard time understanding what the word light refers to. But as we did the last one, we talked about darkness and the concept of a spiritual darkness, and oftentimes with ignorance and definitely with sin and that problem of sin being a dark way, a dark path that we could follow in today. And so we'll look at Webster's, uh, the idea of what Webster says about the definition of light, something that makes vision possible. You can get into the definition about the electromagnet, ultraviolet light and radiation that comes from the sun. Primarily, we're talking about mainly the light that we see all around us, and we oftentimes will refer to the sun as the biggest light that's in the heavens today that gives us the way to see in this world. And when the sun goes down, that's when the vision starts to get a little less, and we start seeing less daylight as the sun sets, and then we know we just have a few hours outside and maybe do some yard work and all that, and then it's that time is gone. We have to go inside, use artificial lights. After that, we have electricity that provides us with all kinds of lights and light bulbs in the house. So that is the natural light. But what about the idea of the figurative sense? And here we look at what figurative sense of light is. And Webster also tells us that something that enlightens or informs. There's other definitions we could look at but I believe you see the point. There is a figurative sense that light is used just like darkness in the Bible, especially like in the little part that's in parentheses, the parenthetical statement about shed some light on the problem. Oftentimes we'll use it that way. Uh, we're trying to deal with some difficult situations. We get come up with some information about those kind of things. It helps us to know what we need to do in difficult problems of life or situations of life. Let's look at what the Bible says about light and how it uses light in the scriptures. It describes basically, first of all, what is good. And that's what we think about. We think about God and his ways and all that the Bible speaks of the issue of, of goodness versus evil. And there's light versus dark. Those two parenthetical are actually opposite. They are opposed to one another. And they are something that are completely opposed to one another. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 to 14. This is a little rather longer reading for what we usually use. But here, Paul says some words I want to center on about the idea of goodness and the light. He says, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them for it is a shameful or is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things are exposed are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, awake you who sleep arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. There's a lot of things to unpack in that long reading in the verses 8 to 14, but we see some of the things that kind of jump out at us. The idea of once in darkness, now that you're in the Lord, you're in the light, and everything that's good, and your life is a better life because of what your situation now is in Christ, and following the fruit of the Spirit in all goodness and righteousness and truth, and everything that's acceptable to the Lord. I don't want to first say this, and I didn't bring this into the lesson, but I was planning on saying this anyway, that 
We understand from the scriptures that God is good, God is holy and just, and he tells us exactly through his word what is just and right, and all everything good comes from God. And so that light is really connected to God in his character, rooted in the character of God himself, as the Bible even tells us in First Timothy chapter 6, verse 16, it talks about how that God is, is inhabits unapproachable light. And so there's a lot to be said, and we'll talk about that, about God and his nature in just a few moments. But notice he talks about the, the great contrast again, about what's acceptable to God and what is not acceptable, the unfruitful works of darkness. And that, again, that's very easy to understand that these works that people do that are sinful, that oftentimes won't be hid, and people often will do them. And if Paul even say that those who do these things, they do it at night. They get drunk and carouse and they do all kinds of, of things that are not right and that are very wicked things in the time of, the, of time of night. But he says, but rather exposed. And what exposed it? says, well, it's the light that exposes. You know, a light will dispel and will take care of the darkness. It actually overthrows the darkness, doesn't it? It talks about it's a shameful thing to speak of those things. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. In other words, you can see very clearly if you have the light and you understand what light is and that's the goodness that life, the way really life's supposed to be lived is a good life. The only good life that really have is in the Lord, isn't it? And so when we understand that and we start living God's way instead of the devil's way in the unfruitful works of darkness, we can see clearly how when Christ gives us light that how bad wickedness really is and how depraved and how uh, it's not a life that we want to have, is it? So we want to expose that and, and stay away from that as much as possible in the Christian life. It's not, uh, we're not 100% uh, free from all that. We have to endure temptations. We have to, to have to have the blood of Christ to cover our sins when we do fall short. But we know what we need to do is come up to where God and Jesus wants us to be. And that's not, that's a challenge. That's not easy. But it's something we do because that's the best life possible. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, here John says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. And this really, in 1 John, he's talking about how that we have a fellowship with God in the light. We walk in the light, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us. And there's that uh, cleansing of, of even the child of God who sins. You know, God makes provision for that, as he even knows that we're not going to be perfect. There'll be times we'll fall short because that's where the human, that's really what the human condition is all about, is that we are tempted. And there's times of weakness we give in to those temptations. And when we don't do what we need to do, we fail in some ways to miss the mark. That's what sin is, a missing of the mark. But you know, God has never done that. God is, doesn't know what it's like to sin because in him is light and there is no darkness at all. And that's really the point I was making about the fact that God is good all the time. That's something we learned from the scriptures and really walking with him. We learned it, that God is, is uh, so much better of a master serving him rather than serving the devil. So it describes also this idea of light, describes the blessings from God. Notice in first John, actually James chapter one, verse 17. Uh, it says, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, from with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. And this teaches us a lot about the goodness of God. You know, the only way that God can really give good gifts to his children is he's good himself. And we know that he is. And he only wants the best for his children. That's really something we understand from the scriptures as well, that God wants us to not hurt ourselves in the bondage and slavery of sin and, and doing things that only hurt us. And when we do things that can even end our lives and, and really give us the kind of, of life that's not worth living in some ways. And so God wants us to know what's right and, and these blessings 
are good blessings. That describes the light that comes from all the things we see here. That, that's one of the things that we love about God is the fact that he is a father who's interested and invested in his children and their salvation. In Job chapter 29, verses 1 through 4, and again, we talked about Job last lesson about there's a time when Job had a very dark days in his life, and he, he struggled with the, the suffering that went on in his life. And he talks about that. In chapter 29, he's actually referring back to when he had good days, and everything was going right, and, and we read the first chapter of Job, we see a man who was really blessed. And the Bible is, is talking, actually Job is talking about that. And he reminisces about that in verse one. And Job again took up his discourse and said, oh, that, that, that I were as in months gone by, as in the days when God watched over me, when his lamp shone over my head. And by his light, I walked through darkness. And I was in the prime of my days when the friendship with God was over my tent. And there's a lot that really Job has to be thankful for in all his life. But, you know, he's talking about primarily the time that he considered the blessings of God something that he was enjoying then. And that's really what the light he's referring to, that, that lamp that shone on his head was God's blessings that were showered down upon Job. He didn't know what was going on behind the scenes with the devil and all that, trying to take away all his goodness and, and all the blessings trying to get him to curse God to his face. And yet, Job, he actually endured that. And he was a very patient man in so doing. He teaches us how to be patient today in those situations of life as we come to times of suffering in our lives. And also, this light we're talking about today describes the path of the saved. If we think about people who are on the road to heaven, and I believe there are people who are on the road to heaven. I'm not one of these pessimistic people that say, well, nobody can ever make it to heaven. It's too hard. God has made it impossible to, to live that way. No, I think we should with confidence look to the life that we have in Christ and in God as something that's possible, that's absolutely possible for us to one day be in heaven if we will stay on that road and live for Jesus. And in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, you remember in our last lesson, we talked about verse 17, about the dark path. But notice the contrast that he uses in verse 18. The proverb writer tells us, but the path of the just is like the sun shining, and the, that, that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. You can just see that because we understand well, how bright the sun can be. We understand that analogy, that, that comparison, that it's like this the light that, uh, that really brightens our way as we're living here on planet Earth. And it gets brighter. You know, the longer you're a child of God, the more you're, you're close to God and reading and studying the scriptures. That, that path does get brighter when we do that. It, it, it starts to get more illuminated. That's why, again, one of the passages that talks about illumination and the lamp and things like that are all talking about, in, in some ways, the, or actually these passages, are talking about spiritual terms and such. Notice what John 8 and verse 12 also talks about here. Here Jesus came into the world. He lived among us. And we were privileged for a while, those who were living then were actually privileged to see the very Son of God physically as he was in the body, in the flesh. And here Jesus would say, he again spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now, if you're on the path of the saved, here goes what Jesus is saying is a part of your life, your existence as a child of God, that you're following the light of the world and you have the light of life. You'll not have to walk in darkness. You know, if we're following Jesus, and how do you do that? You do that by following his words and living for him and doing what the Bible says that you need to do. Again, we look to the scriptures. And Jesus has nothing uh, that's not revealed to us that we need. We all need all the things. There's nothing that's, that God asks of us he's not revealed through the word, and that we can have that light of life that the scriptures talks about. And, we, and, and we're on that path, and I think that's one of the great things of being a child of God 
is knowing the path that we're on leads to eternal life. That's a good feeling, a joyful feeling, knowing that our sins are forgiven because what the scriptures tell us and how we do that is by doing the will of God, by faith, repentance, confession, and baptism into Christ, to put on Christ. That's where we're talking about the narrow road that leads to salvation, Matthew chapter 7 refers to. But also it describes, this light does, uh, the truth, but also true wisdom. I put both of these together because the truth of God's word is true wisdom, but there is general wisdom about life and other things, which the Bible give, does give us. It's the truth of God's word, but then there is the truth that leads to eternal life. And all that really is, is together, I should say. But Psalm chapter 119, verse 105, this very familiar passage by David says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now, if you're on that path, again, we could probably use this in that last slide about the pathway being illuminated and, and it's lit by the, the word of God. And the word of God is that way to know what true wisdom is. And that's how David knew what was right and what was not right. And that's what the Bible guides us in today, in the path of truth and what is equitable and fair and what true wisdom is. Notice what Psalm 119 verse 130 also says. It says, the entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Now there's people who are simple like me sometimes. I, yeah, I have to really look at things and say, well, is this what the Bible's really saying? And, and you know, I'm not really a deep theological, uh, intellectual type of person. I basically what I'm saying, I'm a simple person in a lot of ways. I believe he's talking about more than the idea of simple, those who have of little understanding. It could be those who are uh, not very deep in their thought, but it helps us though. And it helps, it helps all of us, helps me to know what the word of God says and how to live and, and how to do things in life. It gives us the truth that leads to eternal life. And it gives us understanding about a lot of things, a lot of areas of life we wouldn't know anything to do except for what God's word teaches us and helps us know what to do and how to be. And then we come to the New Testament. Those are two from the Old Testament. And here Paul is talking to the Ephesian brethren. Now, how did they come to become the, the Ephesian br brethren? And how did they leave the path of darkness to go on the path of light? It was all through the gospel. And I could have, I didn't use Second Corinthians chapter four, but it's actually a very good idea how they left darkness and, and God gave them the knowledge of this. Ephesians chapter one also kind of parallels that. I used this in one verse. It says that the eyes of your understanding the New American Standard has the eyes of your heart. He says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of his, of the glory of it, his inheritance in the saints. Now, what is Paul saying here? He's saying that you came out of sin. You were enlightened. You were, you know, the Bible also tells in other places, like the Hebrew writer says, the days when you were enlightened, and in chapter six, talks about those who were enlightened and leave that path to go back to the way of sin. And he's talking about things that we understand now that maybe we didn't understand before, before the gospel came to our lives. But now true knowledge and true wisdom is a part of our lives. And we know the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints now. And all that is, is what life is all about, that we learn that it's to fear God and keep his commandments. And that's the whole duty of man is, as the, as the very wise man Solomon would say at the end of the book of Ecclesiastes. So what is wisdom, true wisdom? It comes from God, it's the light that we see that shines and illuminates and enlightens us in our path. A lot of people are looking for enlightenment. They try to get up on mountains and hills and they, they try to do all kinds of things like uh, chanting and things like that and incense. Well, enlightenment simply comes, take your Bible, open it up to the New Testament that we follow today, and look what it teaches, and do what Jesus says, and that's what true enlightenment is all about. But also, light describes God's people. As we think about who God's people are, as the people of God who have left sin, and now they are out of the darkness called, as Peter would tell us, called out of darkness into the 
marvelous light. And Jesus would say about this here on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, beginning with verse 14. Again, another very familiar reading. It says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, what does that say about us? You know, we understand God is the light and Jesus is the light of the world. Now, how can the people of God also be light? And I would say, like many of others who say, that we are reflectors of what light is. We are the reflectors of the true light. And we do that by examples. Notice that he's actually using uh, people who see things and they'll glorify God in that process. They see our good works. They see what we're doing as followers of Christ and say, well, that's something I should be doing. And that's how we lead people to Christ is by being that kind of light to others. And then, then that's talking about an influence as they actually talk about in verse 13 about the salt of the earth and how that we need to stay salty and have the good influence on this world. The same is true with our life. When people see what children of God do and what they don't do, they can either be impressed and say, you know, that's what Jesus teaches me to be, and it teaches me to be a better person. And that's how we learn that goodness and righteousness will win out and people will be converted because they saw, they see Jesus inside, like what Galatians chapter two says about, Paul says about, for me to live is Christ and all that. And when I, I've been crucified to the world and people see me, they don't see Paul, they see Christ shining through Paul. And so that's exactly what he would say about that. And we are alive in that way. In Philippians chapter two, verse 15, Paul says this about this, says that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Again, this is talking about how people of God ought to live in a blameless and harmless way. And that's good if we're doing that. Now, what sometimes gives uh, Christians a bad name is when we're not following the light, when we're not blameless and harmless, when we're not getting actually setting forth a good example before others. But when we are doing this, we help others to see. And in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, you know, a little light in a dark place really makes a big difference. If you go to a place like Mammoth Cave and where they turn off all the lights and somebody might strike a, a match or they might just light a one flashlight and you can see a lot from just that one flashlight or match. And that's exactly what happens when we are what we need to be as a light. It helps others to see in a very dark world. It expels the darkness, if you will. But also, in this lesson, I want to talk about how it does describe Jesus Christ. As we already mentioned the light of the world in John chapter 8 and verse 12. But here, going back to the first chapter of John, John actually begins talking about Jesus in this way. He says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from nothing uh, came into being that he that has come into being. In other words, apart from Jesus, you know, Jesus made everything, and so apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. This it actually begins talking about John the Baptist as well. He says, he came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. There was the true light which, coming into the world, enlightens every man. And I love that phrase because that's what Jesus does. When he comes into your life by faith, when you understand that this world is not our home, that we're just passing through and that eternity is in the balance and that what we must do is surrender our life to Jesus. And that enlightens us really about why we're here and all the purposes of life and everything that this is 
a great staging time or dressing room for eternity. So that's why we must be very careful when it comes to looking at this light and not turn away from the light. I know so many people today, they turn away from the light. They say, well, I don't want to get around the light of Jesus. But that's exactly where we need to go. It describes Jesus Christ. Other passages of Scripture, John 8, verse 12, which I already mentioned, I just want to, want to be thorough in my study of this today, this word study. In John chapter 9, again, with the man who was born blind, Jesus again says the statement that while I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. But what I want to read is in John chapter 12, beginning with verse 35. Here, take your Bible and turn over there. Read this because it's a good light verses that we're going to talk about today. Here, the Bible tells us in verse 35, So Jesus said to them, For a little while longer the light is among you. Walk while you have the light, so that darkness will not overtake you. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he goes. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you will become the sons of light. Again, that shows us how we follow Jesus and how we stay in that light. And I believe he's talking about really the, the teachings of Jesus. You know, we build our lives, Matthew 7, at the end of that chapter, talks about the wise and foolish builders. And what did they do? They built their life on either the foundations of Jesus, that solid rock of foundation, or they built their foundation on the sand. And we know which one held up. When the storms came, the one on the sand, it fell, and great was the fall of it. And so we need to build on Christ, on that light that dispels the darkness out of our lives. And so that's what we need to do, learn to be followers of Jesus. You know where Jesus takes us? If we follow him, he will take us to eternal life in heaven. And again, that's where it describes what heaven is all about, is the light there. Notice the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 21, verses 10 and 11. Now, this chapter is talking about primarily, we're talking about heaven, the new Jerusalem coming down. And he says in verse 10, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her brilliance was like a very costly stone as a stone of, of crystal clear jasper. And so again, it's telling us it's like the glory of God. Heaven is going to be a place that is illuminated by the very glory of God. That's exactly what he says a little later on in the same chapter, verse 23. It says, And the city has no need of the sun nor of, or of the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God has illuminated it, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it in the daytime, for there will be no night there. Its gates will never be closed. That's a wonderful imagery of what heaven's going to be like. And I don't know, I don't know everything about heaven, but there's some symbolism, things like that. We don't but it, is the streets really made of gold and the walls of jasper? Well, we'll just have to wait and see when we get there. And that's one of the things that I love about the Bible because it gives us some things to look forward to. Do you look forward to go to heaven? Do you think about that? Is that heaven is a real place that I want to go to because God is there. God is the light and he'll take care of all of our needs, all the blessings that come from God, everything that is showered down upon us. As we see the sun today and here, here God has better things for us you know, better than the sun shining on us. We feel so good when we get outside and the sun shine and all that. You know, wait till we get to heaven when everything will be as it needs to be, as God will give us the great blessings of eternal life throughout all the endless days. Hope you've enjoyed this lesson. This is one of the lessons we've looked at uh, talking about light and things like that. Easy concepts to understand. But yet, these are things the Bible speaks of and that we maybe take for granted some of the things, the, the imagery and the analogies, metaphors about these particular. We'll go look at some more of these as we in the coming lessons and hope you'll pay attention for those and, and you enjoy these studies. Uh, until then, have a good day and, and may God bless you in everything that you do. Have a good day.